So get off that start line. I'm gonna I'm gonna burn matches on the start line to try and see if I can't break this pack up. But I'm gonna try and get a breakaway. That's the point of this race. What I've learned about Zwift after seven months, this is the video I'm making now. When I make YouTube videos, I write scripts to keep my videos concise and my ramblings under control. Well, as concise as they can be with me involved. If you think that my videos are all just talk, then you should watch a video I've made without a script. I included this comment to a recent video I made as it was one of the first things I learned about Zwift back in May last year when I first signed up. Well, that and how bloody hard racing is on Zwift if you want to win. Everyone has an opinion about Zwift. If you agree with this comment, my two teenage daughters thought this comment was hilarious and they also agree, then this video probably isn't for you and maybe skip to another one. Everyone has an opinion and Zwifters, it appears, are as happy to vocalise these opinions in a way that you just don't get in the running community. For example, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm as opinionated as anyone else. And you probably realise this from watching my videos. Having an opinion on something you're passionate about is a wonderful thing. I could sit and chat with an expert about a subject they love for hours. I love listening to people that care about something. This is just something I've quickly come to realise is as much part of Zwift as the hill climbs or 700 watt sprints off the start line. You don't need to always like it. You just need to know it's part of it. Embrace the positives and filter out the rest. 99% of all Zwift advice in the form of YouTube comments are very positive and supportive with other Zwifters sharing their experiences. I've come to learn that there are and always will be those 1% of commenters who post nonsense simply for the point of posting nonsense. This is just part of putting yourself out there on social media, I suppose. My point here is that those 1%ers are far more vocal in the Zwift community than they are in the running community. I'm using running as an example, as it's also a community I'm part of on social media. I've been a part of that community a lot longer than I have the Zwift community. But I'm very proud and very happy to be part of the Zwift community. I feel very privileged to have found it and to enjoy it. Now, looking aside from the fact that people just post nonsense all the time, it's part of being on the internet, I also think it's probably part of the fact that Zwift gives you a million metrics and stat reports after every race, workout or ride along that you simply don't get in the running world. Of course, many runners wear sports watches. I wear a Garmin Phoenix, for example, and that gives me many, many stats, but it's a choice to look at it and it's not thrust into your face after every run, like a park run, for example, that the stats are on Zwift. This creates immediate feedback about how well or poorly you raced. My philosophy is that there is no such thing as a poor race, as I'm doing something beneficial, and even if I come last, I'm still beating the bloke, me, that used to sit on the couch eating and drinking many years ago. I Zwift because of the feeling it gives me after I've expended everything I have into it. The feeling of accomplishment I get on Zwift after a huge endurance ride rivals the same feelings of success I get after I've run a marathon, for example. That feeling of explosive exhaustion straight after a max effort race and sprint finish is unique though, and one I've become addicted to. I don't need a screen of stats telling me how many pizza slices I've burned or how many average watts per kg for that race. I know that I've achieved something new and I've overcome something hard. <laughs> 20th, no good. Hi, hey. that was hard. Did I beat him? Yeah. Oh. Was I? Yeah. Oh. Small wins. It's me done. Oh, it's a good race. 
The buzz of endorphins and the warm glow of achievement tells me all I need to know. However, and it is a very big however, I know the stats do serve a purpose, especially in game. It's very hard to ride without a HUD. That might make for a fun video. Thinking about it now, riding a Zwift race without any HUD at all would be interesting. But for my point here, I absolutely get that the information provided by Zwift is important but it's not the reason I race on Zwift. If I post a running vid, I normally get comments such as, oh cool, you ran, well done. And that's it. Runners appreciate someone else trying to run. If I post a Zwift video, I sometimes, sometimes get, everything you're doing is wrong and it's gonna end in you and your shit bike exploding. Those are the types of comments I sometimes get. The reality is, it's true. I don't know what I'm doing. We all know I don't know what I'm doing, but that's okay because what I am doing is a damn sight better than what I was doing when I weighed 190 kg several years ago. And what I'll be doing this time next year will be a damn sight better than what I'm doing now. I don't make YouTube videos about Zwift to show you how to Zwift. I make YouTube videos showing you how I'm getting on as a way of documenting my fitness journey. And if in that process, I inspire others like me into getting fit, then that's my job done. That's a very, very positive byproduct of why I make videos. I do and will always appreciate comments from people who get that, who don't take what I'm doing and probably more importantly, what they're doing too seriously. My endurance, I need to work on just pushing myself as hard as I can for as long as I can. However, it's, it's raining today and I don't really fancy a long 25 mile run in the rain. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yes! Yes, yes! I am 23 minutes into the Epic Com. Let's get going because I'm wasting time talking about it. I'm riding a fake bike up a pixelated mountain on a screen and loving every single moment while I'm doing it. And in the process, making myself stronger, fitter, leaner and faster. Watching my videos, almost everything I do in Zwift is wrong. I wear the wrong gear, I ride the wrong way, my seat height is wrong. To be fair, it was wrong and I have fixed it now because of comments. I need to sprint for the finish line earlier. I've sprinted too hard. I've gone too early. I've gone too late. I need to sprint harder off the start line. I sprint too hard off the start line. I need to slow it down. I need to stick with the pack. I went too far up the front of the pack. I stayed too far at the back of the pack. Everything you can imagine, I get in the comments. <laughs> I have come to learn from making videos about Zwift that I'm terrible at Zwift, but I'm not terrible at trying to Zwift. In this, I'm pretty good and I have come a bloody long way. I feel I wanted to address this point, as unlike other videos I make, I found myself second guessing what I share, and that's unlike me. I like to share what goes well, my opinions, and especially what doesn't go so well. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. I enjoy making videos about what doesn't work rather than videos about what does work, because that shows the development. You learn from your mistakes. You don't learn from what goes well. Anyone can succeed when everything goes to plan. You learn from your mistakes. I treat Zwift like my running. When the fun stops, I'll stop. I'll talk a little bit more about this later in the video, but I wanted to draw a line in the sand for future videos. I'm never going to be a polished Zwifter. I promise you that now. If you're looking for someone who's gonna be the finished article, then you probably wanna watch other channels. It's never gonna be me. I do take on advice, but my biggest learning curve will always be my own personal trial and error approach to Zwifting. It's worked well for me in my running and weight loss, and I'll continue with this approach in Zwift. That doesn't mean I'm not gonna to listen to advice. Of course I listen to advice, but that advice needs to be tailored in context to everything else I'm doing. I'm not an athlete, so training like an athlete doesn't work for me. Trial and error does. And the biggest piece of advice I can give anyone looking to try running, Zwifting, or anything really for the first time is to give it a go. If you make a mistake, that's okay. It doesn't matter. Fix it and go again. I promise you now, someone who's picked something up, made mistakes, will be a lot stronger for overcoming those mistakes and getting better at something than someone who's picked something up for the first time, found it easy and cruised through. Someone who's been through the ring is always stronger than someone who's found it easy. I promise you that.
For Zwifters, riders, and all runners who watch my videos on the same journey as me, so basically slow, heavy, looking to get better, you don't need to be the finished article. You just need to want to be better than you were yesterday. Sounds like a cliche, but it's a cliche for a reason. That's it. I considered not saying this in a video. I've been putting making a video like this off for a while because I don't want to alienate anyone watching my videos. But what trumps that feeling is the feeling that someone might be alienated by some of the comments about you have to be good from the beginning, you have to do certain things to be a Zwifter, you have to wear the right gear, you have to have the right bike, you have to have the right kit, you have to do things in a certain way, you have to ride in a certain way. These comments put people off because it put me off if I'd have started this journey and I was reading those comments. I've now written four separate scripts for this week's video. It started out as a standard review of my Zwift race and now it's a video about what I've learned about Zwift after being on it for seven months. My first attempt at this video was a review of my recent Tour de Zwift races and this leads me onto my second learning on my Zwift list. The reason these Tour de Zwift races didn't make it into a video on their own is because I recently made an attempt to upgrade my Zwift setup and it all went wrong. All my Zwift videos you see on my channel were recorded through Apple TV on my MacBook but I found the process clunky and the finished footage sometimes glitchy. The frame rate wasn't always great, so two weeks ago I switched over to using the Zwift app directly on my MacBook and screen recorded my footage. So it's the Muckle Yin today. I've missed stage one, which I'm gonna have to do stage one in a mop up in February, but today is stage two. So my first video about the Tour de Zwift is going to be stage two. So I need to get on the bike because I've got 20 minutes until the race starts and I'm actually going to have a warm up. It really shows how much I'm taking Zwift seriously, the fact that I am now having warm ups before almost every race. Let's do this, get on the bike. My first attempt at recording didn't go well. My first recording was stage two of the Tour de Zwift races. I set the recording settings all wrong and recorded the Zwift footage in the highest possible resolution available. I'm with the lead group off the start line. Okay, we're leaving the Glasgow crit circuit now. I wanna to get to the front here. I know there's a, there's a climb here. <sighs> I think Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg with the combined resources of Meta and SpaceX would struggle to get this ultra 8K two hour epic to play, let alone work well in editing software. So this footage was as good as useless. I will say that this Tour de Zwift race was tough and brutal. It was the Muckle Yin course. I was proud to say that I managed to get to the top of the Muckle Yin with the lead pack, but eventually got dropped finishing the race in 12th out of 148 riders. Overall, I was very happy with this, but realized that these Tour de Zwift races were brutal endurance events on their own. This is the climb. Should have saved my power up for this bit. <sighs> <sighs> Hey, hey, hey. I'm not made for heels. Oh, this is where being heavy helps. Last 2K. Here comes a Clyde kicker. It turns out, well, one lap of the Muckle Yin is my, is my maximum. Ay, ay, ay. Ah. Oh my God. I am broken. There's a dude coming up on me. 10 seconds behind. He can have it. I, I have nothing in me. I have nothing left. Broken is not the word. Ay, ay. I can't let him win. I've got to defend my 12. I've only got a kilometer left. Yeah, I'm done. This is my sprint. 200 watt sprint to finish. Uh, I, oh my God. I just realized I had a feather. I haven't used it. Oh my God. Oh, I don't care. I don't care. I wasn't, I wasn't winning that race. Like, 
it's two laps of the Muckle Yin. So I joined Zwift back in May of last year and I have proactively avoided the Muckle Yin because I've watched a million YouTube videos on it and it looks brutal. And then I've just done Tour de Zwift twice around the Muckle Yin. I'm done. I'm gonna fall off this bike. I'm gonna lie on this cold garage floor for 20 minutes. I'm gonna drag myself to the shower, lie on the shower floor for 20 minutes, drag myself to the dinner table, eat my body weight in pasta, and then drag myself to bed. It was easier when I was fat and I didn't exercise. Ay, ay, ay. I'm not on the floor. Ah. But then, having finished this endurance event of a race, got off the bike, lay on the shower floor, dragged myself downstairs and ate dinner, I had a look on Zwift Power for the final results. To my surprise, this race didn't appear. Nothing on Zwift Power. I looked on the Zwift Companion app and a great big DNF appeared next to my name. Did not finish. Are you kidding me, the people at Zwift Tower? How did I not finish this race? I 100% finished this race. And as you watch this ultra mega 8K footage that subsequently required several millennia to upload to the editing software and took up half my town's power to run, you can very clearly see me limp over the finish line in 12th place. 100% finished it. It was then that I realized that after seven, nearly eight months of Zwifting, I was heavily emotionally involved in these pixelated computer game races. I cared more than I realized. After all this time, these were not just races to me, especially races that last over an hour and a half. These were events that I had invested a lot of time, blood, sweat, and tears into getting better at, hold my own and get to the end in 12th place. To then have a DNF appear against my name for no obvious reason really hacked me off and hacked was not the word I used. Going from a 190 kg obese bloke in his late 30s to now a 101 kg rider trying to get to the end of a race with the lead pack in Cat D without dying now means something to me. And I only realized that when the glitch in the matrix took that away from me. This was a moment of realization. I mean, I know it didn't take anything away from me because I know I finished, but I needed it to say that and it annoyed me that it didn't. <laughs> I'm making it sound more dramatic for the purpose of this video, but I did have a moment of realisation that I care more than I realised about getting better at Zwift racing. This is very good news for those subscribers that enjoy my Zwift videos. It means I probably won't be getting bored of making them anytime soon because I really, really enjoy racing and I really care about the results. I did email Zwift Towers and nearly two weeks later, yes, two weeks, I got this response. I am sorry to hear that you were affected by a known issue that we have been experiencing with races. I understand how frustrating it can be to encounter such a problem, especially when you put in your best effort and did everything right. We have identified the issue and our team is working tirelessly to find a solution that will prevent it from happening again in the future. Regarding the race results, I completely understand your disappointment at being marked as DNF despite completing the race. Looking on forums, speaking to other Zwifters, this is a well-known issue and one that crops up every now and then. Frustrating and something Zwift Towers need to fix. These races are hard enough without being unfairly DNF'd afterwards. Imagine if this was my winning race. Imagine if I'd beat a sandbagger to win this race and I got a DNF. Could you imagine that kind of nonsense would put someone off for life? Luckily though, it wasn't, so I moved on. So with the DNF still resonating in my head, my next race was stage three on the Mercury 40 course. Over 40K and relatively flat with only 317 meters of climbing. Still brutal and I got dropped early on. Annoyingly, I lost the footage for this race. My new recording process meant that I lost the footage at the saving transferring stage. Very annoying as I still have the camera footage of my losing my mind over this course footage, but without any Zwift footage to context how hard I was working, this is just nonsensical nonsense of a bloke riding a static bike in his garage. Okay, we're about halfway. I have no idea what's ahead of us. That's the key to this, consistent speed and consistent pace. I tried to stand for the hill. I, ah, this is me sprinting, I'm trying to keep it in 200. I'm broken, oh my God. My new upgraded recording process is not going very well. So far I've attempted to record the future 
and lost or deleted one of my recordings trying to transfer it. Now, with two failed attempts at the Tour de Zwift under my belt, and so when I say failed, I mean my first attempt ended in a DNF against my name, and the second ended in an hour and 15 minute torture fest, placing in 51st out of God knows how many. I thought, how hard can these Tour de Zwift races get? There must, they, they must be the hardest two so far. Boy, was I wrong. Q race three, stage five of Tour de Zwift on the Achterbahn in Innsbruck. Right, hang on, hair bobble needs to go in. I'm not zoomed, I'm zoomed way too far in. Today's race kicks off in three minutes. I am massively, massively late. I've just managed to jump on with three minutes to go, zero warm up. Um, yeah, this is the Tour de Zwift stage five. I've already completed stage two and three. I've had to miss four because I had an event last weekend. It's a brutal course. Uh, I've never raced this course before, but I know it's got a thousand meters of climbing, 40 odd K of cycling. Yeah, brutal, brutal. Okay, I nearly forgot to press record then. Oh, I've missed the start. Bloody hell. I thought I'd missed the start then, but we're okay. Over 48k and nearly 1,000 meters of ascent that took me nearly two hours and 20 minutes to complete. Alp de Zwift would be easier to race up, especially considering that my Alp de Zwift PB currently sits at 92 minutes versus the 137 minute torture fest of the Achterbahn route. I finished the race in 24th out of 60. The good news is that the footage did save. I didn't lose it, but for some reason, it's really, really glitchy. Not the quality footage I was hoping for. Now, my recording process strikes again, and it's now that I realize it's my laptop that's causing the issues. It's not powerful enough. Q, new computer and solution. I have a new solution that I'm working on that will be in future videos. 15%, 15.15, Jesus. There is literally an event on Zwift at the moment called Fat, called Fat, called Flat is Fast. And instead of me, 15 stone bloke, racing them on courses that are flat, I'm racing, not even a ride along, I am racing Tour de Zwift up mountains. Oh my God. It seemed like a good idea when I signed up for it. Almost 1K left. I managed to close the gap to the guy in front. I got him down to 20 seconds, 19 seconds, but there's only a kilometer left. I don't think I'll match him. I don't think I'll catch him now. Okay. Come on, 100 meters. Ah! Come on! Ah! Hey! Route complete. Ah, uh, 24th. Ah! Oh. I am absolutely done. Having completed three races in the Tour de Zwift race series, I decided to call it there and not finish the other five races I planned for throughout Jan and Feb. I didn't decide to quit on the Tour de Zwift because I can't complete it. None of these races come anywhere near the Four Horsemen route I completed at the end of last year. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Route complete. Oh my God. I am so pleased, done. Or even touch the sides of running a 100K Ultra. Oh, <laughs> Cute. If I wanted to, I could finish these races. No, the reason I decided to give up on the Tour de Zwift is my next point on this list. And that point is fun. Going back to my first point on this video, I know that after watching this video, many of you will say that you'd benefit a lot more from the ride-along version of the Tour de Swift, with the exception of stage two, which I apparently DNF'd. I'm not letting that go. These races did turn into workouts rather than races. I got dropped and I spent most of the race riding on my own. So they were just ride-alongs. And it's here that I knew 
but I find the racing aspect of Zwift a lot more fun than the training and workout aspects. I absolutely get that the workouts have been designed to help people get better at cycling and a lot of people enjoy them, but I enjoy the racing. Now, going off on a slight tangent, please don't switch away. If there's one question I get asked more than any other question, that is, what did you do to lose so much weight over the last few years? The answer to this is nuanced. It's not straightforward and could probably be a video all on its own. If that's a video you'd like me to make, then please let me know in the comments and I might make it. But my point here is that one of the main aspects of my very successful weight loss was a lot of exercise that I found fun. The fun bit is the important bit. I found joy in the exercising and if I hadn't, I'm not sure I would have succeeded in losing over 15 stone or 95 kg. The American novelist Pearl S. Buck once said, to find joy in work is to discover the fountain of youth. And this is very, very true. Losing 95 kg exercising alone is not possible. Of course, there are other aspects such as good nutrition, healthy diet and not overeating. But exercise was the main catalyst for me and being able to have fun whilst doing it was a gift and it truly was a gift. I tried other fitness things that I didn't enjoy. Ironically, one of them was cycling, and I sat these attempts off as I knew that even with grit and determination, which I have bundles of, I wouldn't be able to endure these mind-numbingly boring fitness and weight loss plans, so I stuck initially to walking, which then led eventually to running, which has then led me to swifting. I found great joy in this process, and if it's fun, I'm much more likely to keep doing it. I've now subsequently found Zwifting and indirectly cycling, which I'm incredibly grateful for. But if I hadn't found fun in the early attempts at fitness, then I wouldn't be here now making videos about cycling or Zwifting. This tangent was a long-winded way of me trying to explain that I do not find any joy in the solo training rides on Swift, which is why I do not do them. I've tried a few, lost the will to live, and returned immediately straight back to racing, which is what I did with the Tour de Zwift. I find racing fun a lot of fun and I'm just going to keep doing that. I race on Zwift for several reasons. It keeps me fit, it massively helps my running, helps me maintain my weight loss, it's competitive and most importantly it keeps me coming back to the bike on Zwift. So having said all of this, joy and fun is what I've learned Zwift gives me. As you know from previous videos, I've been trying to secure my first win on Zwift in an official Zwift race. So for the past few weeks, I've been desperately trying to get my first win in an official Zwift race. But winning is a means to an end, a way of keeping me entertained and build on the fun. I'm very competitive, so wanting to win makes it fun. Not winning is okay. If or when that stops, then it will be a different story. But for now, I find the thrill of the chase more fun than the finished product. And if that helps keeping me coming back to the bike on a regular basis, then that's great. I've been given advice to race in races that are known for having tiny numbers to get my first win, or even sign up for a race in the middle of the night, meaning that I might be the only one or only one of a few racing. But those are not circumstances under which I wanna win a Zwift race. As part of my 2024 New Year's resolution video, one of my resolutions was to achieve and secure my first official win in Zwift. I feel I need to clarify what that win needs to look like. I want it to be in a popular and or busy race and not under the cover of darkness. I'm pretty sure I could win any race in the world if I'm the only one that turns up to race it. <laughs> I've also learned that Zwift power is king in Zwift races. There will always be a Cat C rider or riders racing in Cat D. It's just part of the process. And until Zwift Towers find a fair solution for this, I need to overcome it beat them or at least work out who they are in a race so I don't ruin my own race by trying to chase them down and focus on winning a race on Zwift power as well as within Zwift finishes boards, if that makes sense. As Zwift power seems to be where everyone focuses their attention and mostly, mostly filters out the sandbaggers. Knowing I'm not very good on big hills, small rollers are good. I feel my first win is probably gonna come from downtown Dolphin, uh, Glasgow Crit City, or the RGV race. As much as I'm not gonna unfairly stack races in my favor, I will focus on courses that benefit my strengths. No point racing on Muckle Yin, for example, if I know I need to burn all my matches I need for the sprint finish, staying with the lead pack up a huge climb. So with all this in mind, I then entered my first flat is fast race in Jan, because obviously flat is fast has no hills. I was desperate to try something new. I've seen a lot of Cat D racers in races. I'm racing in, win, the word race appeared a lot in that sentence, with a breakaway. They've won with a breakaway. 
You all know what a breakaway is, pushing away from the lead group and holding that gap. The bigger the gap, the better, and then holding that push until the end of the race. That's ultimately what a breakaway is. You can describe it in other ways, but that's what it means. Now that sounds really easy on paper, looks even easier when I see these faster riders break away with ease, and even more impressively maintain that breakaway. That's the hardest part, holding that gap. So I entered into the stage one, flat is fast, on the Tempest Fugit course, and I thought I'd go for that breakaway win. Trial and error. I've never experienced a breakaway, so I thought I'd give it a go. This next race is gonna make the comment section explode, and I refer everyone back to point number one in this video. This race, I decided to try something new, all out breakaway attack. And boy, did I go for it. And I went for it straight off the start line. I peaked at 790 watts, got a decent gap, and attempted to hold it. It was an epic start. Oh, get off that start line. I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn matches on the start line to try and see if I can't break this pack up, but I'm gonna try and get a breakaway. That's the point of this race. No way I can sustain this for too long. I of course couldn't hold it. The pace of the lead pack meant I had to hold in excess of 300, 350 watts for the whole race to maintain a watts per kg ratio to keep my chases at bay. So I decided to then drop back into the pack and attempt the breakaway again at three-ish K from the finish. Okay, we've been caught. There's about what, 15 of us in this lead group. Very good. That's 50 other people dropped. I'll take that. If I leave the breakaway too late, then it's more of a long sprint finish that I can't hold. If I go too early and I have to endure 350 watts for longer than I'm capable of. I felt like I'd recovered enough during the ride after the sprint start to pull off an attempt. I needed to know what it felt like to go for it. I'd never experienced it before. My second attempt at a breakaway in the same race. Okay, under 2K left. It's got fast now. I might just go for it. F it.
I completely burnt out meters from the finish line. Of course I did. The person chasing me took what I did as a gift and went for it. I felt like I went far too early. Maybe if I left it slightly later, I might have had it. I'm done. I died within touching distance and rolled over the line in 19th. Even though this was one of my worst finishing positions in ages, I was very happy with this race as I learned a lot. I learned a lot about timing, recovery, max capacity, and especially how bloody hard it is to maintain a max effort pace on your own without draft. I hadn't experienced this before. Trial and error, remember? There's absolutely loads that I've learned about Zwift since buying a smart bike last May and signing up for my first race. Too much for one video. If this video was something you enjoyed and you'd like me to make more about Zwift rather than just racing videos, then please do let me know in the comments. As I've already said, I've learned that Zwifters are very opinionated and I do appreciate that. Please keep the well-intentioned comments coming. Zwifters love a stat. So here's one for you. 35% of people that watch my videos and get to this point are not subscribed. If you saw value in this video, then please consider subscribing as it helps me grow my channel and produce more videos like this one. If you thought it was all just talk, then you'd be 100% right and I hope you enjoyed it. See you in next week's video. all just talk. I'm not going to let that comment go for a while. My daughter thought she won the lottery when she saw it. Thanks for that.